We're given the vector field f and asked to find a function little f so that the vector field f equals the gradient of f. Because we're told to find the function little f, which is called a potential function, we can assume that the vector field f must be conservative, otherwise we would not be able to find the potential function little f. Let's begin by verifying the vector field is conservative by performing the test for a conservative vector field in 3D shown here below. With the vector field f has components p comma q comma r, where each component has a continuous partial derivative over an open region r, then the vector field f is conservative if and only if these partial derivatives are equal to each other. We'll notice in our case p is equal to three y z, q is equal to three x z plus two, and r is equal to three x y plus two z. Now let's begin checking the partial derivatives. Let's first find the partial of r with respect to y, which is a derivative of three x y plus two z with respect to y, so we'd have three x plus zero or three x, and this must be equal to the partial of q with respect to z, which is a derivative of three x z plus two with respect to z, which would be three x plus zero or three x. So these two partials are equal to each other. And now let's check these two. So we have the partial of r with respect to x, which is equal to the derivative of three x y plus two z with respect to x, which would be three y plus zero or three y. This must be equal to the partial of p with respect to z, which would be the derivative of three x y z with respect to z, which would be three y. So these two are also equal. And now we need to check these two last partial derivatives. So we have the partial of q with respect to x, which is the derivative of three x z plus two with respect to x, which would be three z plus zero or three z. And finally we have the partial of p with respect to y, which would be equal to the derivative of three y z with respect to y, which is also three z. So this does confirm the vector field f is conservative. Now let's work on determining the potential function little f of x comma y comma z. Again, we now know that the vector field is conservative, so our goal is to find the function little f of x comma y comma z such that the vector field f equals the gradient of little f. Remember the gradient of f would have components, the partial of f with respect to x comma, the partial of f with respect to y comma, partial of f with respect to z, which means three y z must be equal to the partial of f with respect to x, three x z plus two must be equal to the partial of f with respect to y, and finally three x y plus two z must be equal to the partial of f with respect to z, which means to reconstruct or determine the function little f of x comma y comma z we integrate, and we'll integrate the x component with respect to x, the y component with respect to y, and the z component with respect to z. So this first integral will be the integral of three y z integrated with respect to x. This integral here would be the integral of three x z plus two integrated with respect to y. And here we'd have the integral of three x y plus two z integrated with respect to z. So by determining these three antiderivatives, we should be able to analyze them and reconstruct the potential function little f of x comma y comma z. So here, we integrate with respect to x treating y and z as a constant, so we would just have three x y z. Now this antiderivative is only recovering the x part, so we could be missing y terms and z terms, y z terms and a constant, so let's write this as plus a function of y and z. Let's call it j of y comma z. Next we integrate the respect to y treating x and z as constants. So we'd have three x z times y or three x y z plus two y. Now here we could be missing x terms, z terms, and x z terms. So we're missing a function of x and z as well as a constant. 
So let's write plus k of xz. And then for our third integral, we integrate with respect to z, treating x and y as constants. So the antiderivative of three x y with respect to z would be three x y z plus the antiderivative of two z with respect to z would be two times z squared divided by two, which would be z squared. Here we could be missing x terms, y terms, and x y terms as well as a constant. So let's write this as a function of x y as L of x comma y. And now by analyzing these antiderivatives, we should be able to reconstruct f of x comma y comma z. Notice all three antiderivatives have the term three x y z, which would be part of little f. The second antiderivative has the term two y, which must also be a term in little f. And finally the third antiderivative has the term z squared, which must also be a part of little f. So we have plus z squared and then plus k for the constant of integration. So this is the function little f that we're looking for, which will help us evaluate the line integral based upon the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So going back to our first slide, we now know that little f is equal to three x y z plus two y plus z squared and notice how the constant of integration is already here. So now we want to use this potential function to evaluate the line integral along the curve C of f dot differential r where the curve C is defined here. Before we do this, let's review the fundamental theorem of line integrals. If C is a piecewise smooth curve lying in an open region r given by the vector function r of t, if the vector field f is continuous and conservative, then the line integral along the curve C of f dot differential r is equal to little f of x of b comma y of b comma z of b minus little f of x of a comma y of a comma z of a where the function little f is the potential function of the vector field f which we already found. So because we know the vector field f is conservative and we found the potential function to be little f of x comma y comma z, we can now use this to evaluate this line integral. Before we do this, so notice how x of t is equal to t squared, y of t equals t plus three, and z of t equals two t minus three. And the interval for t is a closed interval from zero to two. So using the fundamental thermal line integrals, this line integral equals little f of x of two comma y of two comma z of two minus little f of x of zero comma y of zero comma z of zero. So x of two is equal to two squared, which equals four. Y of two is equal to two plus three, which equals five. And z of two is equal to two times two minus three, which equals one. And x of zero is equal to zero squared, which equals zero. Y of zero is equal to zero plus three, which equals three and z of zero is equal to two times zero minus three, which equals negative three. So here we have f of four comma five comma one minus f of zero comma three comma negative three. So performing substitution into f, f of four comma five comma one would be three times four times five times one plus two times five plus one squared. And f of zero comma three comma negative three would be three times zero times three times negative three plus two times three plus negative three squared. So simplifying, we get sixty plus ten plus one minus six plus nine which equals seventy-one minus fifteen, which equals fifty-six. So this is the value of the line integral using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. I hope you found this helpful.